Welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for deciding to award me this great honor this evening, uh, the USICD uh, International Advocacy Award. And I'm just so sorry that I cannot be with you um, as I am in Tokyo uh, with Toyota. I work for Toyota now, I'm on the main board. Um, but I did say to Candice Cable back in June that I wouldn't be able to make it because at that time I was quite ill uh, with one or two different things which I've recovered from now. But now I have very important meetings to attend uh, in Tokyo. So again, thank you uh, for the award. And I understand you want me to say a few words or maybe more than a few words about my life and uh, how I have been an advocate for different things maybe for the last, uh, I don't know, 50, 50 years or so. So I'd started off with sport at school when I was still on my feet and I loved participating in sport, uh, many different sports, but I didn't like the training at all. And after my rock climbing accident when I was 16 in 1966, I found this amazing sport of wheelchair basketball. I'd always loved playing football or as you call it, soccer, but I never had that control when I was on my feet, in my feet, to really play the sport well. But I could catch and I could throw and, and catch anything. So when I had my accident, wheelchair basketball was just a natural for me. And uh, I, went back to I went back to school after my accident and then to university. And um, I took a, an honors degree in geography and just scraped through, but I most certainly got a first class honors in wheelchair basketball, training three or four hours a day uh, with the team that were national champions at the time in basketball. So what happened after university? Well, uh, I was playing for the international team, the Great Britain team, and uh, in 1973, uh, we won the first world championships in wheelchair basketball in Belgium. But I had been competing for two years in the French League. I was the first player in Europe to go and play in a, in a different country. And, uh, and that's where I met a wonderful woman uh, who became my wife, uh, Jocelyne, and we've been married now for just over 45 years. And, uh, and uh, she proved to me uh, that teams, uh, maybe basketball teams have five on court, but teams really start with two. And um, it was after I'd come back from France uh, when I was 20, what was I, 24, and we were married, uh, that I started to take part in the administration of my local sports club. I became chairman uh, and secretary of, uh, of the Great Britain Wheelchair Basketball Association. I did that three times. And then moved into the international scene with the uh, basketball section of the International Stoke Mandeville Games Federation. What a mouthful that is. And, um, and I became a member of the board in 84. And, uh, and then uh, I was invited by both Spain and France, not Great Britain, to stand to become chairman of that organization in 1988 in Seoul at my last and fifth Paralympic Games as a, as a wheelchair basketball player. I was successful. I defeated a great American called uh, Stan Lovanovich uh, for, to become chairman, but Stan remained on the committee as, uh, as vice chairman. And uh, it was then that I started to meet up with and started to understand uh, the Paralympic movement. Uh, and uh, I didn't always get on with the then president uh, of, the, uh, of the IPC, IPC being founded in 1989. And, uh, and I think I would have been viewed from within the Paralympic movement as uh, very much a rebel, uh, but a rebel with a cause, a rebel who believed in, uh, in those players that started the sport of wheelchair basketball in 1945 and 46 on the east and west coast of the USA, who believed in self-determination, who believed that the players should run the sport. And that's how I took that forward into the international movement. And uh, as I say, I came somewhat into conflict with the then president, Bob Stebwood of Canada, and decided, uh, following discussions with my wife, teams start with two, that I should stand for president of IPC, 
to sort of parachute in to that movement from wheelchair basketball. And I was finally successful in the elections which took place in December uh, 2001 in Athens. Um, but there was a lot of politics in sport during those elections. And in fact, when I phoned my wife up to say that I've been elected, she, doubt, she did not believe me. She said, I'm sure you've been stabbed in the back and you're not telling me the truth. Anyway, it proved that I had been elected and then went forward with the IPC. We got a good relationship with the International Olympic Committee. We signed different agreements of cooperation and these fully came into effect with the Beijing Games in 2008. Those games in 2008 were really great games and they became great games when in 2006, Hu Jintao declared that President of China declared that the Paralympic Games would be of equal splendor to the Olympic Games. We then moved on in the Summer Games to London in 2012, which I did say were the greatest games ever. And then we came to Rio in 2016. And on July the 18th, 2016, six weeks before the start of the Paralympic Games, we had two phone calls on that day. The first one was the organizing committee in Rio to tell us there was no money left for the Paralympics. It had all been spent on the Olympics. And the second one was the McLaren report on the state-sponsored doping from Russia, which then would mean that IPC and its board decided to suspend the Russia from the games and they did not particip participate in the games in, in Rio. So quite a, a lively existence as president of, uh, of the International Paralympic Committee, but I wouldn't change a thing. It was a fantastic experience over 15 or 16 years. And now I've moved on to new horizons with Toyota. So that's a little bit of, uh, of some of the detail of, of, of my life, my life in sport, etc. And again, I would just like to thank you for this award and also to wish you all a really, really great evening. Thank you and goodbye from Tokyo.